Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to continue the velocity measurement. In the first two parts, I have explained the difference between the speed and velocity, and later I have divide, I have given the uh, types of velocity measurement, linear velocity measurement and angular velocity measurement. I have explained the first method of velocity measurement also. Now I am going to continue the second method of this velocity measurement, which is a seismic type velocity transducer. So here the seismic type velocity transducer is nothing but lot of vibrations are there inside the magnet. Those vibrations are between the springs, those vibrations are to going to be converted into some electrical voltage like a current or voltage we are going to measure in the form of electrical parameter that vibrations are going to be calculated. So here see this figure. The magnet, a permanent magnet is connected between two springs which are connected on either sides of this magnet. So this is one spring and this is another spring which is connected, the magnet, permanent magnet is connected between these two springs. And some conducting wires are also connected just above and below of this magnet here and here. Okay, so whenever some vibrations are there within this magnet, uh, because of this spring, some vibrations will be there in the magnet and the magnet will move in the upward or downward direction at fast rate, at a frequency like 20 hertz, like that. So because of that, some flux is generated because of that movement and the conductance, uh, conductors will be taking some current and that current will be flowing through these conductors. So this is the arrangement which is known as seismic type velocity transducer which is used to collect the vibrations generated inside the magnet and in the form of some electrical parameter. So a permanent magnet is supported between two springs and fitted with low friction bearing rings. It acts as a seismic mass. Why it is mass? Because there is no gravitational force here. Just the uh, magnet is in air which is connected between the springs. That's why just we are calculating the mass. <clears throat> the frame is rigidly attached to the object whose velocity is being measured. The object is vibrating at a frequency in excess of the low, low natural frequency of the transducer. So as I said here the magnet is vibrating between the two springs. The self resonant frequencies of seismic mass are typically 10 H to 15 H. So whatever the frequency, whatever the vibrations that the magnet is producing, those vibrations are within the frequency ranges of 10 H to 15 H, which is nothing but very low frequency range. If the operation at frequencies Above 20 H occur, the mass is relatively stationary. So the vibrations which are generated by this magnet, if they are producing above the 20 kH frequency, then the mass of the magnet that is moving, which is relatively stationary. And the case of uh, and the case and the coil moving in the magnet magnetic field has a large voltage induced in it which is proportional to the velocity. So whatever the vibrations the, that the magnetic field is uh, experiencing those are related to the velocity of the movement. The seismic transducer have a good frequency response. So entire frequency range whatever the range is given like 10 hedges or 15 hedges up to 20 hedges. These frequency ranges uh, if we are specifically working in this particular range it is having the entire frequency range exactly. Whatever the vibrations that has been made by the uh, uh, what is that magnet. So same frequencies can be calculated when we are taking the vibrations. Both moving coil and seismic transducers have the disadvantage that connections must be made on the moving part. So it is having a disadvantage that connections must be made on the moving part. If you see the figure, we have just connected the connecting wires on either parts of the either sides of the magnet so that we can get some flux and because of that flux only we can get some the uh, voltage or current variations because of the movement in the magnet. So it is having some disadvantage because of that movement may cause the conductors to vary. So second, third type of the 
transducer velocity transducer is linear velocity transducer linear velocity transducer so here the velocity of a particular device or particular product is calculated in the form of a movement that is in linear fashion that is in linear fashion that means either horizontal direction or in the vertical direction okay so it is a linear velocity transducer where some coil is being used and a shaft is being used because of the movement in the shaft the coil induces some flux because of that flux some current is producing and some output voltage will be generated if you remember the concept of lvdt linear variable differential transducer the same similar similar lvt is also working with the similar kind of uh, principle what we have seen in the case of lvdt linear variable differential transformer or transducer see if you see this figure we can understand a coil coil one is taken here coil two is taken here which is one is connected in opposite phase of the other so we have taken one iron core which is connected which is placed from here to here which connects between which connects both the coils coil one and two so it is having a shaft it is having a shaft to rotate to rotate shaft moving core shaft moving core that means this shaft is used to hold this particular hold it is to particular device whichever we want to calculate the velocity that movement can be given in this direction or in this direction so the movement can be in the left hand direction or right hand direction depending upon the movement of the velocity of the product which you want to calculate so because of this movement some current is going to be generated flux is generated some current is going to be generated that current we are calculating and taking at the output it is the horizontal movement just the same kind of uh, uh, nature we have taken with the permanent magnetic coil which where the surrounded uh, permanent magnetic coil is surrounded by a coil where the coil which is having the surrounding of this uh, coil is known as the mag that magnet is having the north pole whereas the uh, above and below on either sides of this core we are having a south pole okay if you see this first figure we are having the, on the left hand side which is having south pole and right hand side which is having north pole so coming to this description of the linear variable linear velocity transducer a linear velocity transducer is an inductive device which utilizes the link between the electricity and magnetism as found by h a lorentz <coughs> what he said if a magnetic field moves near an electrical wire current flows through the wire so if any magnetic field is there around the electrical wire some current is flowing through that wire connecting wire that is the statement given by this hcl orange whatever the same principle now we are applying on this concept in the figure one and figure two the, so that some velocity because of that movement in the velocity movement in the particular magnet some current is flowing so whatever the current that flows in the wire that is proportional to the current which is generated which is flowing through this one is current is proportional to the velocity current is proportional to the velocity of this magnet magnetic core which is connected here so lvt nothing but linear velocity transducer consists of a rod called the core a permanent magnet so the shaded part which is connected from here to here this one this one which is connected here like this from here to here that is a iron rod that is a core which is nothing but permanent magnet and two electrical coils as i said the core slides inside a hollow cylindrical tube called a bobbin and a dc voltage is generated when the core moves so this is what i explained when the core is moving in the left and right hand direction because of the shaft so that some electrical as it is moving and surrounded by the electrical wire that wire is having some current flowing through it so we are calculating the output voltage what is the amount of voltage generated because of this movement which is proportional to the velocity 
since the two coils are wrapped with opposite polarity two coils are opposite uh, connected in opposite polarity see one is wounded like this and another one is wounded like this that means intentionally the coil is wounded in a different out of phases so that's why they are having opposite polarities and since the magnet also has two poles north and south so the magnetic fields are having north and south on either sides of this core because of this polarity which we are connected in the opposite direction so the south pole includes a voltage primarily in coil 1 and the north pole primary in coil 2. So here we have south pole and here we have north pole as we have seen in that figure. It turns out that the voltage is proportional to the speed of the core. What I said earlier, although the range is limited, LVTs are used in some types of machinery like milling machines. Okay. So this is the linear variable transducer where the movement of iron core, nothing but magnet which is wounded by the coil, we can calculate the velocity of this movement of the uh, magnet in the form of voltage. So the generated voltage, some current is flowing through the coil whenever the magnet moves. So the, because of that current, some voltage is generated V out, that V out is proportional to the velocity of the magnet. And the last method in this uh, linear, uh, linear uh, velocity transducers, that is uh, linear velocity. Uh, there are two types of velocities are there, linear velocity and uh, angular velocity. So, the uh, four different types I have explained. Now, this is the fourth one. Um, transducers are transducers using Doppler effect. What do you mean by Doppler effect? Before going into the concept, let us see what do you mean by Doppler effect. Suppose, consider a person who is standing in a railway station, who is standing in a railway station, so what happens, suppose one train is coming, one train is coming nearer to him, okay. So whenever this train is very far away from this person and blows some horn, blows some horn, how it listens, how this sound is going to be heard by this person, it is very low level, it is very heavy low level. When it is coming towards this person, slowly the sound raises as the train approaches him. As the train completely approaches to him, it is having the maximum peak of the sound. And when it is going completely away from the person, again slowly sound goes down. So this type of variation in the sound is nothing but Doppler effect. Doppler effect is nothing but change of sound due to the movement of either observer or source. Here is observer and this is the source. Suppose the same condition may also happen. Suppose the let us consider the train is stationary and it is blowing the horn continuously and the person is moving in, on a vehicle. The same situation may occur. So either source or observer is in motion. The change in the sound wave is nothing but your Doppler effect. Now the same Doppler effect how it is helping us to determine this velocity. The Doppler effect is an effective and accurate method of measuring the linear velocity. If a narrow radio beam or ultrasonic beam is aimed at a distance at an object, the beam will be reflected back to the source. See, if a narrow radio beam or ultrasonic beam is aimed at an object, the beam will be reflected back to the source. So, uh, any object or any sound wave is transmitted on that moving object, the, uh, the, that signal will be reflected back. Because of that also, we can calculate the velocity. See, in the radar system, generally this type of measurements have been used. In any radar system, radar systems you may know or may not know, it is in the final year of BTEC. In the radar system, radar system is stationary. System is at one place, it is having one antenna. And one object is, object is nothing but an aeroplane. Object is moving just towards or away from this object. What it will do? It produces a sound wave. It, it produces a radio beam. Nothing but some RF signal. When this RF signal touches this object, some part of the signal will be reflected back and collected by this antenna. So this signal is processed to calculate the velocity of the signal using the Doppler effect. 
using the Doppler effect. I told you some change in the frequency will occur that is nothing but Doppler frequency shift. Because of this also we can calculate the velocity by the relation between the relative velocity of the object and as well as Doppler frequency shift. So, however, if the object is moving, the frequency of the signal received back differ from the transmitted signal. When the transmitted signal is different, received signal is different when the object is in motion. Remember, if the transmitted signal frequency is Ft, the received signal frequency is Fr. Suppose if the object is in movement, either towards or away from this distance, away from the radar system, the transmitted signal frequency is different and received signal frequency is different. That completely depends on the movement of the object. So, with this relative frequency also we can calculate the moving object. Okay. In the next class, I will explain uh, the another type of velocity measurement which is nothing but angular velocity measurement. Thank you.